I'm so glad all of you are here today to talk about blockchain. Blockchain is one of these technologies that we hear a lot of hype about, but yet we don't really know what it is. Sometimes there's a lot of what we call FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt around blockchain and some of the related technologies. So we're here today to play a game. This is a great game that I invented and you can uh, take and use in your own organization as well. It's called the blockchain game and what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a blockchain ourselves. We're going to do it on paper with paper and pen. We're going to be kind of old-fashioned about it. So you don't have to be technical to understand what blockchain is using this game. So um, let's go ahead and we'll start to dive into blockchain, what it is and what it isn't. Now, first of all, I want to tell you that um, blockchain is a distributed ledger, okay? And there's no central server authority. So in other words, all you are going to form the ledger, if you will. Okay, all of you on this network will have a copy of that ledger. You'll be able to see the transactions in that ledger. And a huge variety of information can be stored on a blockchain ledger. Now, we could store financial transactions. We could store traditional financial transactions like we'd have in a small business, but we can also store more complex financial transactions, so there's smart contracts. And I know some of you are already thinking, what about Bitcoin? What about cryptocurrencies? Blockchain is related to the, those technologies, but they're not one and the same. So every time I talk about Bitcoin, I'm going to run over here so that you know the difference, okay? That I'm talking about something that relates to Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies, but when I'm back over here, we're just talking about the fundamentals of blockchain. We could also store property records. Here in the US, we're blessed with some really good uh, property records. We can go to our local recorder's office and we can see who owned land all the way going back to when it was first plotted out. However, many countries don't have this. And so they're really looking at blockchain as a way to store property records, be that property like land property or other types of property. Shipments and inventory. Supply chain management is still a very, very paper intensive industry. And our colleagues there are looking at how can they use blockchain to track uh, transactions throughout a supply chain, how can they authenticate the correct sourcing of materials, all sorts of stuff. But what I want you to play along with me right now is a scenario where we would store grades on a blockchain. So let's think about this. We have a distributed ledger for grades. Now already all teachers calculate student grades and they enter this into some central repository okay so this is called the registrar's office at higher education level or it is called the central office at uh, k-12 or our high school so why don't we just eliminate this whole registrar thingy sounds kind of goofy anyway, hard to pronounce, um, and we'll save some money. We'll have all the teachers just maintain a copy of the grades for every student for every class. So we're going to try this. So I'm going to need six volunteers from you all uh, to serve as some special nodes on our network, which are going to call, be called miners. Okay, you're going to have to do some work, maybe even a little math in public, which can be a little embarrassing. Uh, I'll give you some tricks for dealing with that. But you will have the chance to win fabulous prizes, okay? So I'll give you some prizes uh, for your extra effort. And I'm also going to need seven student volunteers. So let's go ahead and get started. 